You remember you remember this American older guy that was there in the desert? Shiny. Yeah. He was he was kind of interesting and very strong in his being, so he was this kind of people have like a really strong voice for example. So I talk really loud and sensitive usually when I'm myself. And they speak like, oh, well, and this and that, you know, and oh, I was there and then the, the 99, you know. And he was an extremely interesting person. So be mm -hmm. at the beginning, I was asking him questions like, how was this, how was that? And he was having really interesting life, connection with, with Colombia and Chile and other countries in the US. And he was telling all the stories. And, and, and then, well, th I was asking myself before going to the retreat, like how we gonna end up like being seven, ten, or fifteen people close in almost the same room for a week or two. So I knew at some point for me it can come up strange with some people, you know, or that you get tired of the environment or something, which is totally natural, but mm -hmm. it's nothing to bitch about or say like, oh, I don't like this, or you just yes. have to swallow it or just be with the process and everything. And really, the people coming on the spiritual, like we went process uh, or retreat, were really kind of nice and into their process, everything. But 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 with this guy, whenever he was speak speaking, um, I was I was feeling like it's really intrusive, you know. Like I was really into myself, and my energy is really sensitive. Yes. And and when this guy just speak. He has a, such an emotional energy charge, like electricity, so it comes through his voice and it just go through me like too much all the time. So I felt like this from the beginning, but you know, a first hour, first day or first day, I would try to ignore it, it doesn't molest me. <laughs> but then after a week, when we sit in a very quiet room in the temple or somewhere and you hear this, like it's somebody put a very loud bass when you try to meditate and it's just... Mm -hmm. which is, that's mm -hmm. how I feel that it's just going through me. Yes. So at some point, I wasn't really planning to tell him that or anything, or, you, you know, I just... It, I knew it, but it, it would probably never go well, especially this guy was really close into his ego. Yes. So if you, if you say it to a person who's really actually meditating and actually spiritual or actually work with himself a lot, he can just get like... And then he swallow it the same second or next minute or next hour or next day. But he he tend to swallow it whatever yes. you tell him. Yes. Mm -hmm. This or night. And once we've been sitting at the table, and it was already like the end of the retreat, so we already knew each other pretty well, and it was all good and everything. And people were already came down quiet, and it was circle of twelve. Mm -hmm. And everybody, the the frequency of all this gathering was we synchronized. And it was all, even the shaman got better and synchronized and he got through his process and to got this thing better because he had some issue with accident before and some something he was going through, like a tough mm -hmm. moment of life, which we everybody had. So he, he finished with that and he was going much better with, and we all get better and, and really interesting and me as well. Uh, but at the same time, well, with some people and some differences, we were desynchronized because of the difference of the people. So maybe that's why we didn't do peyote in the first week, first two weeks. Yes. Because some people still had fear or some issues or for sure some people were not ready for peyote or they, they were even not ready for the cannabis ceremony because we could do that as well. And I offered it because one of the guys brings some cannabis and he left us like a few joints mm. when he was leaving. Actually, he, like, he left four to shaman and one to me like a fat joint and oh. banana paper. Uh -huh. So I had that and I, of course, I broke any rules that we are not supposed to use this or that, but I was so, after doing my process over the week, which I was down for a few days because I was working my issues. Another thing is like, people come to spiritual retreat or they went to Temasca. I went to Temasca recently and I noticed it happened to every one of us. And I've been through this like many, many times on ceremony that you go to ceremony to work through the things. So then you go like, serious? That's about me laughing about serious seriosity again. Then you go serious, and then you come up the stuff that bothers you, that actually people can see it on your face, how serious you get, to work it through. So they taught you in school or somewhere, or shamans teach you that you go, to the pro you go to the problem, you know, like somebody, I don't know, you were molested in a child or you have some problem right now or at work or whatever. It could be anything that's just heavy for you. And, and you just have to work it through, you know. And it's just 
funny because the life and the ceremony show me that you don't work it through, that actually you can see it and you let it go. The thing is to let go, not grab it for the ceremony and have it on your face and uh -huh. have it in your mind and then they come out of the ceremony like, like this or a little sad and I came out from Temascal like laughing my ass off for 20 minutes and I didn't take any heaviness with me yes. but I left somewhere behind I was doing the, the process of dying in the Temascal action like mm -hmm. the mild version because after 20 minutes I thought I'm gonna like die with the heat and the sauna so uh, yes. but that's, that's the other video, that's the other stuff so the seriosity of the moment uh, of the ceremony is uh, one thing that I don't take things that seriously but, but this story was uh, about this guy that we were sitting on the table and there was like six, eight, ten people like almost everybody from the circle at the, at the desert and he was just sitting next to me and he was telling some story and for, now it seems to be a little bit ridiculous for me but I was then I was so sensitive and his voice is so interruptive kind of aggressive with him uh, his emotional ego mm -hmm. um, you know this electricity of, of his being was just pouring out of this voice and then it was very like aggressive for me and I didn't plan to say anything but I had something in mind in case of I wish to say one day and I was wishing to say it in the most polite kind way my being can pass mm -hmm. so I was like I was like really conscious I was like I really don't want to hurt this guy I really want to pass this information to him but the most kind way so I was like listen do you know like um, that that the way actually that you could a little bit come down with the emotional charge oh i was missing that word emotional charge this electric charge of what you're saying that you could say a little bit more quiet because it blows away my aura and i was I, that's how i describe it i don't know if it actually blows away anything of you but that's how i feel like for example i noticed somewhere that sometimes you somebody bump into you in the store with your cart like especially in countries where people could be aggressive because mm. of that and there's so much aggressive in the moment that it just blows me away like yes. a three-year-old child like if you scream a three-year-old child it just blows the child away that's why you cannot do it with the children because they don't have this aura like a stone that protective aura like adults have mm -hmm. like you can keep your space whatever you tell to them they just absorb whatever you just scream at them they just it goes through them so I told them that in the most kind way I could because I was feeling I need to share it or he needs to hear it. it I felt it at just the right moment. Before I felt it was just bad moment and I knew that either way it can go, go good or bad. And mm -hmm. he was like, at this moment he was like, okay, so I'm going to shut up now and everything. Ugh. And I'm like, that's not like, the point. Like, like child. Mm -hmm. uh, like, mm -hmm. Now I'm going to shut up. Oh, you don't want to be speaking like like this it's just funny i'm trying to act it right you know it was, it was like this like a nervous people mm -hmm. and i was like no 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 that's not the point just tell the same story but don't charge it you know yeah you don't have you have already a very fast vehicle you don't have to put supercharger there because it just blows people away when you accelerate and i told them that and, and you know i thought it's okay <laughs> for me it was just information and then uh, during the, the meeting in the temple, you know, we are sitting like 12 people, very calm, so nobody speaks, just shaman, shaman speaks some, something sometimes, and he asks, what do you think? It was like the end, actually, of this whole retreat, so he was like, what do you think about this? Actually, it was one of the time that he asked what we think, or to share, or something. So people were sharing, I call it, all their bullshit, usually, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they don't have nothing to share, so they make things up oh i feel so i feel so so lighter and my heart's open and something and i'm like dude really <laughs> i mean i see you're better in the process like all of us but can you say just something real or say just like i just sometimes at the ceremonies or something like i'm not feeling anything maybe i feel something two days later don't worry shaman you're good mm -hmm. i feel something week later i'm gonna have a breakthrough i'm gonna write it in my diary I'm going to change my life or it's just going to change when I'm in the bus or it doesn't matter. Just keep yourself real. And just people, even at the ceremonies or something, and they're like, oh, I'm like this and like that. Or sometimes they just talk nonsense. Like this guy was sometimes sharing half an hour his life of, of I would cut it to the 30-minute story of some bullshit that you don't even know what he really said. 
over the time, but yes. he was sharing a lot. And it was supposed to be important. <laughs> but it's like important from the ego. So nobody, I think nobody of the people really heard his important. I was just like, sometimes I wanted to say like, be quiet for a second. Can you tell what you really feel? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. because what you're saying is just words spilling, but, but I didn't go that far, okay? <laughs> it, it could be rude. <laughs> Even for a person who's really understandable. Yeah. Well, if somebody do it to me, I would just I would just do it. And it's, but it took me years to get to the point where I could take something like this from a person that mm -hmm. somebody could do it in the cell or somewhere and say like Mike, cut the bullshit, just say what you feel. And I would be shut up for three, five, eight seconds and then I would start over. Without I would push away the ego for a moment, you know, just wait, wait, ego, wait. You know, you're good. We fight, we kill people later. Okay, just do what you have to do now. Like, let me do my thing, you, you wait. And, but in, in, in this case, with this guy, and he was, everybody was sharing something nice. So I shared something as well that I went through this process. I went through the purge. For a week I was purifying myself through the ex-relationship and the problems I had like with love and some, again, for other people, bullshit process. But that was, I was real. And it was really nice to share as well. So I, I do sharing in two, three minutes and that's it. Like you don't have to tell your life story again. And But this guy was telling like for 30 minutes his things and which, <laughs> yeah. And and then at the end it was like, he, re I don't remember exactly what he said, but he was referring directly to me that there is this guy, but he's young and I forgive him because he said this and that or something. And, he, and I see he, goes with all that hate in his speech in mm -hmm. the circle of 12 people in the temple and I'm like is this really happening you know uh -huh. like that that he cannot fix himself or some it's just a process you know like we're supposed to share something nice and close the trip and he shares how he got how his ego got you know instead of listen to what happened he just got hurt with his ego mostly mm -hmm. not the heart so, so he was pouring out all of this again, uh -huh. bullshit, like how he hates me because I said something that he yes. didn't understood, obviously, and he just exploded with the ego and he had to keep it for a few hours that day and he keep it later and then he was like, I'm going to crush him, you know, I'm going to tell what I think about the, at the ceremony and then the, the temple mm -hmm. where, where we're supposed to study spirituality, self-connection mm -hmm. and peace and yes. love and opening heart. Well, at least that's why I go to places like this. So he was saying like this, but, but and then he, he came down and he finished and other people do all the beautiful things, they, they shared and, and shaman mm -hmm. and everything, it was really nice. But it was in the end, like, when, when we finished the ceremony of sharing, he was like, he was still, everybody was coming out, so we stand up and we're coming out slowly to the entrance and, well, exit, and I'm ready to come out and there's like two people still sitting and, and he was still sitting and he was like, Mike, come here. You know, and it's like, <laughs> and I, I see what's happening, you know, and I'm like, are you inviting me to insult me or something, you know, do you want to do this or what, what do you want from me? Because mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to come to people to get insulted or to mm -hmm. pay people for something I don't want to pay. Mm -hmm. and plus, I'm coming to them, you know, so I see what's happening. So I'm direct and he's like, no, no, come, come, come. And I'm like, well, we'll see how it rolls, you know, and then he's like, He's like with a hand, you know, so I say, okay, let's, let's play it. We'll see where it goes, you know, mm -hmm. so I shake his hand as he like, and he's going again with his speech, you know, like uh, in this way, like uh, he's saying something, I don't, it's not important what he said, but he's like, mostly what I heard, like, I really hate it and I want to kill you and some, and he was saying like, you know, like something that we did and this and that, and I understand that you're young and, and, and things and it's you know it's difficult and stuff like this and I'm like listening and I just cannot believe uh -huh. what's happening you know this guy just called me to tell me how he hates me or how he wants to kill me really literally like well not literally like spiritually like mm -hmm. he would, he, if he could he would put hands on my throat because of his ego you know and I yeah. was like I was like you know thank you I understand that's it but and and we shake hands and he didn't want to let go of my hand so he keep me like this for 30 seconds i was like enough thank you mm -hmm. you know i know what you're saying i understand i understand what you say because he wanted to make sure that i understand that the speech that he did in the temple a few minutes before that i understood it you know 
that he hates things and, oh. and me or something. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I understand what you're saying. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I'm sure I understand who you are, what you're doing, you know, it's, very, it's pretty clear. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that. But, but the good part of the story and everything, you know, we all did that. I was that guy in the past and I see more guys like this and I was exactly that guy. Mm -hmm. or maybe not that far going with, I'm going to shake your hand okay. and try to kill you. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did that when I was little or something, like a teenager maybe or some really stupid age. I'm pretty sure I did that somewhere in the way in my life. Mm -hmm. I could even come up probably with a story. But when I was already more getting in my 20s or more normal human or I was looking for some normal connection with myself, I, I never did that. And, and then it got better. I would never do it. <laughs> um, so uh, after that, I knew what he was coming through. But it really hurt me because I come back to my tent and I was like shaking. Okay. Maybe not physically, but inside of me, this guy was blowing me away, mm. like he was talking before and it just blows you away. It just was blowing me away like a death wish that still exists. Mm -hmm. Like I really, some of some part of my crazy mind, I was like, I'm not sure what this guy is capable. He's uh -huh. having a lot of knives, he's crazy, he's not constant with his spirituality, and I don't know how much crazy he gets. And I had to calm, calm, calm down my mind to be like, okay, he's not that crazy. Just be cool. I don't attract that much craziness. It was just a moment of trauma, drama, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's released itself. He's going to live in his craziness for a moment and I'm going to live in mine. And I lay down and I just let it go. It was one of the quickest process of, of shaky trauma problem that I let go. It took me like an hour or a half. Mm -hmm. That's really quick for this, um, well, size of the problem that somebody blows you away and you don't know if you, if you're reflection it like if you want to kill him or protect yourself or resolve it or attack him verbally as well mm -hmm. that's what the, all the mind ego even the heart is like afraid so that's what it all connects to to do the you know <coughs> to attack to protect yourself or attack for a pleasure or attack for uh, protecting yourself literally like maybe even physically you know like mm -hmm. because it's it gets more physical yeah. with the words and people say it words are words and i just tell you this that well no this is the energy, the vibration, the frequency. It goes through your field, through your aura, through your being, through your heart, all the chakrams, magnetic field. It's all in the pictures, on the Kirlian photos and auras. I'm, I'm, I'm talking in the different, different moments, different parts of the switch. And, um, and the good part of the story is, so I worked through this and it just took me an hour and I went to sleep peacefully because I said like, I'm not keeping it to myself I have to resolve it so I had to let go this danger this guy this everything and let him work it with it and he went to sleep I went to sleep we <laughs> wake up in the morning and I saw how difficult night he had it was visible in his mm. in his face that he was tired like he didn't sleep you know this what 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 it happened it wasn't really about me he was going through his difficult process yeah, so course. my process was a weak difficulty and I let go and I got evolved involved for another week so two weeks was like half of difficult work and half of getting advancements and pleasure and bliss yeah and and some people just could come and have a two weeks four weeks or eight weeks of a difficult and he was in the difficult part um, in, the, in the second week as well which is totally natural and, and that night I, I saw that morning that he was, yeah, a lot of birds, that, that he was working through it. Oh, come on, my doggy. <laughs> and this is the dingo pharaoh dog. And obviously, or hopefully, he likes me somehow. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And even though I molest him. So. And, and I noticed, and I knew he is going to pay the price of what he did, not me. Because that's how it works. And this is like the... And uh, the conclusion of the story that you know carrying aggressiveness angriness something like it's not this the person who hurt you or stole from you or something is, is taking it it's just you having difficult night and the other person even the fault is at the other person like it was on my fault at this case because I was mm -hmm. the one to exactly. blame. Uh -huh. I didn't take any blame I was just clear and I just wake up and then I noticed he was also thinking, because it's all without words, but I all see those things. He was thinking that I'm having the grudge for him the same as he was for me. Because he was thinking like, okay, universe worked work like, if we always think that it works like we do. 
we think we act. So he was thinking I'm having the same towards him. And then he noticed that me, I'm just pretty much, I don't care, I'm, I'm neutral. I'll try to, I forgive him, you know, it's just quickly. I was lucky to forgive that time because other times exactly. it's just somebody did less thing to me than trying to kill me and, and I cannot forgive. Somebody steal hundred bucks from me and it, it took me once a, a, a time to forgive, like months or years. Or something, uh -huh. something totally not important. Not even for me, not not mentioning the universe or other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So it was like a lot of learning in this simple example. It was beautiful. Then I noticed that he started to let go the thing because he noticed I didn't care. I was like, I in my mind I was like I forgive you so you can let go forgive yourself you know don't hate me and forgive that you've been angry for a moment and this is just a moment and nothing else and then I left like the next day or something and, and they all stayed I just say like I wish good and everything for everybody and mm -hmm. it's just process you know but some people might listen to this and then they might think like oh this is negative positive story or this guy was good this guy was bad or whatever who was good or bad me bad me good or this guy bad or good you know or who was hurt or something well it's just a story there's nothing good there's nothing bad i don't want to people understand there's like there's a bad guy good guy or the story is good or bad it's just what we work through every day and it ends well if you just let it go a little bit and this guy let it go i'm pretty sure he worked through it as well because already he was tired next time and he saw the things probably mm -hmm. who got really hurt in the process and let go and it was just at the conclusion it was just beautiful mm. and just another example yeah but it's another example of just working through the retiro <laughs> spiritual like the re spiritual retreat you know there is some moments of <laughs> different work besides spiritual technical i think it's her actually no, it's a he. It is? Okay, it's a guy. <laughs> With a small balls. <laughs> it happens, you know? But I still like it. I love it. Should I stop? <laughs> yeah, you can stop.